media. Um, people take, as a matter of fact, because they see it. They don't discriminate at the viewing, uh, what they're saying, where they would discriminate with, with our wonderful newspapers and what they read. So therefore, the, the, the onus then comes back in full circle to the individual, in my estimation. It's up to each one of us to develop and to, to broadcast our own standards, to carry our own message uh, about what freedom of the press means and what individual rights mean. And every, every single one of us needs to take up that challenge. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I think the important thing is, is, to, is to recognize that in free society, um, protected by the Bill of Rights, and, and it's interesting because the Constitution was only signed under the agreement that there was going to be a Bill of Rights. That was the deal that was struck. There's going to be a Bill of Rights. There's going to be a body of law which defines the limitations of governmental authority to control its people, and, and that, that, that that body of law was written and the rights extend to the individual. And yes, in certain areas of our life, the majority rules. That's how we elect people. That's how we make decisions town meeting or other areas of our life where rights extend to the individual and that's that's what we're talking about here in terms of expression in terms of the right to associate political rights etc and I think if we're going to be a free society we have to take the risk of saying that we're going to have to put up with an awful lot of obscenity and we're all going to be defining obscenity in different different terms. I would rather have my kids go and see an X-rated movie and see people performing sex than to see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something else. Now, we differ on that. We may differ on that. Um, but I want to make that decision, and I don't want any particular religion or the government to be dictating in law what the parameters of that decision is going to be. Me. That's what I think we're talking about in a free society. And that's what I think we work for in the Civil Liberties Union is to enforce the Bill of Rights, is to enforce the concept of freedom, the concept of choice. And I think when we lose that, then we've lost something very precious. We've lost the cornerstone of the free society, the right to choose, the right to express ourselves, and the right to make those decisions for ourselves. Pat, we don't have the oldest government in the world, but we do have the oldest Bill of Rights in the world. And I think if we had this forum 50 or 100 years from now, you're going to get the same kind of disagreements and arguments. And to me, that's great. Because the genius of the First Amendment is that there are no necessarily right answers, no politically correct thought. Uh, the First Amendment is there for robust debate, and that's the beauty of it. It's very frustrating sometimes because you say you wish you could come away with a Miranda card like you can under the Fifth Amendment that you could put in your wallet and read, but that'll never happen with the First Amendment. I don't think it ever should. It'll always be uh, a tug of war between the majority and the minority, between the courts and the Civil Liberties Union or the prosecution. And there's going to be that flexibility, that play in the joints that frankly is what keeps our government functioning. Uh, as, you, as you leave just uh, for the future, take one little three-part test with you as public relations people who are looking at the Bill of Rights. The key question you always have to ask is, is it a government action or is it private action? Big difference. Second, is it government funded or is it private funded? Do anything you want with private money, a little different when it's government money. And then finally, the third is, is it totally unlicensed by the government or is it an activity which the government licenses <coughs> and approves on a periodic basis? Because you need to know the answer to those three questions, you'll then get kicked into three different bodies of law or three different ways of looking at it. And uh, that's why we tried, I think, tonight, and I want to commend Pat for this, to mix around all three of those key distinctions, public versus private, government funding versus not, and then, of course, is it a licensed activity? That's in. And now they would be extremely tame, and it was meatloaf and 
you ever saw a sweet potato pie in uh, Salisbury or Seabrook, you know, the, the uh, it's a two live crew who look pretty tame. And nobody was chasing them. I don't know what the difference was. But we all seem to have survived that. Somebody is always stretching the limits. And um, I think that's part of however we survive. That's part of our society. And we don't have to get shot. We may cause some great consternation when we press those limits. But somebody is always going to do that. And us trying to sort out what's good and what's bad about that is probably the most important thing we face. But I have no answers to that. Let me just remind all of us who are, in fact, public relations practitioners, and certainly one of our responsibilities is to keep this kind of a debate going in the court of public opinion, to represent those whom we counsel as, as expertly as we can so they can present their points. But to bear in mind that though we will be constantly involved, we will probably not get the closure of any kind of a solution now or later. I want to thank all of our panelists who obviously bring to this uh, interesting, I thought, points of view, and it's nice to, to moderate a panel where you have six people, all of whom really have depth of background in their subject. I'm sure you've sensed that, and so let's give our panel a